I ended up using the cherry casing again for what will be the back of the cabinet and the back of the cabinet will act like the drawer stop. To get started, I resawed the material first to 5 eighths of an inch and then pre-drilled in countersunk holes. I already attached the, the back to the right side of the cabinet. Now I'm going to attach this one to the left. I'm using a squeeze clamp to hold the back in place and I'm attaching the back with inch and a quarter screws and I'm screwing into, in this case it's the end of the cabinet, but as I work my way down it will be into the drawer divider. To get into this tight spot I removed the tip of the Phillips head and I'll put that into the impact driver. So that works pretty well, but when I first thought of doing that, the drawers were a little bit heavy, just a little bit more than a sixteenth of an inch, so they stuck out a bit. And then the idea was how to trim the, the drawers, not the doors, the drawers. And I ended up using my chop saw. I don't have a video of it, but I'll show you what I did, because this is one of those cuts that can be a little bit hairy. First I put a higher fence on the saw to help prevent tear out, and then a stop block, and I held the drawer first upright holding the blade guard up and just trimming a little bit off, a little bit heavier than the 16th, and then flipping the drawer over and doing the same thing. And I did this with all of the drawers. Okay, well that worked out really well, and I like the way it looks. I like this strip of cherry at the back of the cabinet. It's like an accent piece and works, works with the handles. I know some people probably think it's a little overkill for shop, furniture, but my shop has been kind of a mess for the last 20 years and I started to get it looking nicer in the past two years because I wanted it to look better on camera and, and it, it really makes you feel better when you come out into the shop and you have something nice like this. So a couple of questions, some of them have to do with the cabinet, some of them don't. Uh, one of them was where do I get my blades sharpened? I, I just go to my local hardware store, Jasper Hardware here in Atlantic Highlands and usually when a blade gets dull, I'll bring one or two blades down there and I'll, I'll usually have a sharp one with me so I can just swap it out. The blade that I've been using on the saw for the past, I think two years is, an, it's hard to say this, Al Mohana. Uh, I, I ended up getting this blade at, at um, I ended up getting this blade at Monteith Lumber. Uh, Monteith Lumber is an old bridge, that's where I get my hardwoods. And I bought a blade from Buzzy, then I got in touch with the guy from Amuhana. He gave me two blades, three blades. I kept two and I gave one away on a show. Uh, and I, I've been using them ever since, but the website is sort of down. And I don't know what's going on. It's a nice company. I was hoping to do some business with them because I do like working with their, uh, their table saw blades. It's been great. So that's kind of a long answer there. Uh, the next question was how many plies are in the plywood and I think it's seven plies and then if you count the veneers then it's nine. So you've got seven plies and a veneer on the, the top and bottom. And the core is European poplar. Somebody asked if it was birch. It's European poplar. So it's, a, it's one of the softer hardwoods for the core. The big question is where can you get this plywood and I should have a list of distributors in the description. I'm still waiting for the company to send me that list and as soon as they send me that list I'll copy and paste it into the description. I'm not sure why it's taking them so long to send that to me but you can get it on the East Coast and I don't know what their hopes are or whether they're hoping to push push across the country or not but uh, if you live in the East Coast call around you might be able to find it. I get it at Blaisdell Architectural Supply and it's kind of, that's kind of a small place. Uh, it's close by. If I, this brings me to another question. Uh, somebody asked me, how does it compare with pure bond plywood? And I've never used pure bond plywood. I know Jay Bates uses it all the time, and his miter station is made out of it. I know Lynn from the Darwin Arbor channel used it on something recently. 
Uh, but the reason why I haven't used it yet is because Lowe's is about 15 minutes closer to me than Home Depot, and I think Pure Bond is sold exclusively at Home Depot. So it's something that uh, I've heard good things about it, so it's something that I want to try sometime down the road. A few people wanted to know, am I going to add uh, a fence and a stop block on the left side of the saw here, and I'm going to. I just want to put a little more thought into that. That would make things a lot easier to, especially cutting face frames, just to be able to set up a stop block. So that's something I will do, hopefully in the next few weeks. What do I think about finished plywood? Uh, I haven't really used it that much, but it would definitely save a lot of time, especially for the insides of cabinets. If you're going to build your boxes and then maybe paint your face frames, it would uh, save a lot of time. And I know that Garnica plywood does sell plywood that is finished. They also sell a, a NHDF, which is a high density fiberboard plywood that is meant for painted projects. And they've got plywood with cherry veneers and things like that. So these are all things that I hope to work with and build furniture with uh, or cabinets with throughout the year. And as I do, I'll, I'll let you know what I think. What's the square footage of my shop? I've talked about this before. The downstairs is 15 by just about 24, and the upstairs is 15 by 32, and I have a little storage room back there, which is about five and a half by 15. What brand polyurethane did I use on this project? And, let's see, where is it? This is the uh, premium quality Aquazar. I've used the Minwax also. It's, uh, they both work pretty good. They dry fast, it's easy to use. I, I like the way that this sanded up. I, I put a finish down and maybe an hour and a half later, I sand it, sanded the finish. And what you're looking for is the, the finish to powder up when you sand it. You don't want it to gum up the paper. And this powdered up really nicely and I was able to get another finish on it. Really, I think I got two finishes on the plywood within three hours. And that's, that's definitely a plus about working with water-based polyurethane. Another question was, what do I think is stronger, water-based polyurethane or oil-based polyurethane? I think it's probably oil-based polyurethane. I'm a little bit old school that way, but I know that technology is getting better all the time. And... Um, and water-based polyurethanes are getting better and better. So I really don't know enough about it. It's something I'd like to learn a little bit more about. What kind of nail gun do I use? Uh, the, my little pin nailers are Kadex nailers, and uh, my 18-gauge nailer is a Bostage. Is there enough space for the saw to rotate? And there is. This is, well, I have to unplug it. I have to extend the cord a little bit, but, um, that's the nice thing about this Bosch saw is that it doesn't take up a lot of space behind the saw because it, it works off of this hinged arm. So I hope that answers uh, most of the questions and thanks for tuning in. Thanks again so much for all the uh, Happy Father's Day comments. I had a, a really nice relaxed weekend, spent some time in the shop. I hope you guys had a good weekend. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you soon.